international politics as well as uh, political communication. I was, uh, I am still a, a team member of the election strategy committee of the ARC party. So I'm writing, well, political commercials, scripts, I compose music, I'm a musician at the same time, I'm a poet. So whatever, which is related to the air, as I say, verbs and tunes, I'm in. Uh, my BA is from political science in Boston University here in Istanbul. And my master's degree is from Johns Hopkins University in Washington, D.C., where you have such a lot of people like Brzezinski, Paul Wolfowitz, and Fukuyama. So I studied with them, fortunately. And uh, well, on the way back home, I studied at Bikant University in Ankara. I did my PhD thesis in political philosophy. It's a critique of uh, liberal democracy's ethics. How immoral liberal democracy is. So this is my PhD thesis. Uh, as I told you, I am a man of music at the same time. I've got uh, several albums published. I compose, I sing. I do television programs on the relation between Sufism and music. And uh, I've been trained in traditional music for now over 20 years. Uh, I'm still a student, of course, in that. Do you know D1, the Arabic word D1, which is a collection of poetry? So I got a D1 myself in the classical uh, Turkish, which is going to be published this, uh, this year, inshallah. Okay, now. Uh, let's start with our sofa. First, with a picture. What do we see on the screen? There are two persons, isn't it? So, where can it be? Where is this picture taken? At the hospital. How do we presume that? How do we understand that? Yeah. There is a next support of the girl. What may have happened to her? Okay. What may have happened to her? Yeah. Yeah, some sort of problem, either an accident or uh, some sort of illness which drives you that forbid to the hospital. Okay. And the guy. Just like myself, a very handsome man. Uh, but I, I lack some of the hair on the head. So, who may be that guy? Husband. Husband of love, her lover. Lover. <laughs> the young, of course, always a man of love. That's good. And uh, maybe the brother. Yeah, or some sort of brother. Okay. Let's assume that the girl, God forbid, has fallen in coma for some time, let's say a month. He had an accident, a traffic accident, let's say. He, she, sorry, she fell in coma and she's in the hospital. Just at the moment she woke up from coma, we see that man standing next to her. What will be the first question? What would be the first question she would ask to him? When you have the consciousness for the first time, what do you ask? Where am I? Where am I? Yeah. We, we know it from Turkish movie because we watch a lot. <laughs> and there are a lot of scenes like this, you know, the, the guy or the girl going unconscious for some time and then a guy comes and hits the hammer on the head and you immediately become conscious, etc. And the first question we usually ask is really, where am I? And the second question, well, we told her that you are in the hospital. Okay. So the next question, what am I doing here? Why am I here? Is it? I mean, yeah. Why? Why means a sequence of reasons, not only one. In our life, when we ask why, 
we expect an answer, but an answer is a series of reasons. Well, we told her, because you had an accident, so you are here. And the third question. I think, uh, oh my baby, you are not married. <laughs> In my absence. <laughs> Maybe, what happened to me, or what will happen to me. Yeah, what will happen, or what happened to me, or for how long? Am I here? Well, was I unconscious? Okay, so these are three questions when a person comes out of coma, which means when you leave unconsciousness in favor of consciousness, the first question you ask about is about the place, space. Why is it so important for us, space? Why do we ask the first question about the space, but not, for example, who the hell are you? <laughs> but the first question is, where is this place? Where am I? Why is space so important for us? Any idea? Context? Yeah, it, it's, it's actually a framework of context. But for example, you are now in Istanbul. Do you feel more secure in Istanbul than your hometown? Yes. When we go to... Well... <laughs> thank you. But the thing is, even if we move within our own country, from one town to another, even from one district to another, the same city, we usually feel less secure. Why? Because we don't know it, really. We don't really belong to that. Isn't it? So, the idea of space is actually the idea of what? Security. Security. Therefore, the word terror, do you know where it comes from? In English or in French? Ever? Well, and you have the word territory. They are relatives, these two words. Terror and territory. Terror means you are rooted out of your own space. So you feel insecure. Okay, that word is coming from terra, from Latin, which means earth, land, space. So when you are rooted out of your own space, you are terrorized. Okay? So it's a very important space to know your space, to know your geography. And the second question was about events. Why am I here? Is it? Okay? So it's actually talking about the events, the, 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 the sequence of uh, happenings in the world. And the third one was related to the time. So we got actually three basic elements. When you become conscious out of unconsciousness, you are immediately open to so these are three questions we are asking. Who are we? When we put it in plural. Who are we? Where do we belong? And what is our past? Actually, these three questions are about identity, geography, and history. So, I liken this girl in coma to the Islamic Ummah for the last 200 years. We have fallen in a coma. In a coma state, a person is living, she is not dead. The metabolism works for her. But your consciousness, your awareness is not there. So therefore, just like that uh, person, Islamic Ummah was living, of course, in all its elements, in all its geographies, etc. But then, the consciousness was not so open. So what we see in recent decades is an awakening and the asking of questions like where are we? What is our space? Where are we in the world? What is our proper place in the world? Okay? So these are questions related to geography. Where do we occupy in the world, in this world? And the second question is related to our identity. Who are we? Am I Pakistani? Am I Turkish? Am I Kurdish? So then what 
but I'm Muslim, so these are all confusing discussions. Why? Because the consciousness was lost at some point. And the third one relates to history. Where do we come from? What happened to me? Is it? These are three areas, unfortunately, our Muslim scientists usually pay. They don't really pay attention. Okay, so why are we talking so long about these very abstract things? Let's do engineering, national positive science, etc. I was a counselor to the head of the president of the Turkish Scientific Council. And I initiated for the first time in 40 years in Turkey social science support program. Can you imagine? The Scientific Council didn't accept social sciences as sciences, so they didn't support for 40 years since its foundation. Can you imagine such a mentality? So, as you presume from your own country, most of the scientists that we are talking about, in politics even, come from engineering backgrounds, or they are scientists. But you would find very few social scientists who, who can talk about these three things. Because these three questions were left out of our thoughts. We said, no, they are not important. We are in Turkey. Okay, I am Turk. I am living here. I am a citizen of Turkish Republic. So, why bother? But we have to bother. Because this is the time for awakening. And let's not forget, because of many sleeves that we have fallen in the past, Millions of Muslims have been massacred all over. And our lands were taken away. Our lands were colonized. Our brethren were enslaved. Still. So therefore, it is very important that we keep in mind to be alert and to be aware and to be conscious. Not to think that the coma state is a living state. Yes, it's a living state, but it's not a conscious state. So, I will focus on these three things. When we say identity, who am I? Or as the Islamic Ummah, who are we? We are actually asking these things. What do we believe? What are our values, principles, traditions, and goals? These are the things which make up an identity of a person, of a community, of a commonwealth, of a whole world. So these are the things that which unite people, so you can call it an identity. The, uh, is there any person interested in etymology? Like etymology of languages? Yeah. For example, the, the etymology of identity. What is the root word for identity? No? There is only one word. And you, you see it on the, on the word, actually. It is the first syllable. I, yeah. I, I. 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 And it comes from where? Greek. Which means ego. Ego is I. I is him. So identity in Greek at the root of the word means to be him or her. So therefore, when we refer to identity, we are actually defining ourselves as if we are not ourselves. Okay? So therefore, when we talk about identity, actually we are talking about an abstraction. Which, is, which, which may not really be there, which may not be there. So therefore, we have to be careful. Most of the identities that Muslims carry today are actually attributions of the colonial powers. Syria, that word doesn't exist before 1900. Because that region is called what? Eshaa. Eshaa. In the Ottoman Empire, it was the province of Sham. When you say Sham, it even covers some, sort of, some part of Iraq, Lebanon, today is Lebanon, and Jordan. For example, Jordan 
does not have any historical reference. These are all British and French coined words, just to divide the people. Even the Azeris in Iran, or today's Azerbaijan, or that word was invented in the second half of 19th century, referring to a Turkish uh, group, which you know comprises the half of the Iranian population now, Turkish speaking Azeris. Azeri name was invented by the Persian nationalists because they are Turks, as we are. They have different dialects, which we may understand very easily. They understand us very easily. So these are identities that are actually constructed by colonial powers. We have to be careful about that. So, the Muslims, they have to rely on their beliefs. Belief makes you different and it constructs you. And Islam, Islamic faith, constructs you at each action and thought, which is a different thing than the secular sort of ideologies, etc. So when you believe, whatever you do, whatever you think, constructs you again. So it's an, uh, it's an unending process of construction. Because you are evolving around Allah's principle. So let's continue. When we say about identity, what is this picture from? Where is it? Moscow. Moscow, yeah. So this is where? Kremlin Palace. And this is the palace which was built when? Any, yes, you don't have to be an expert of Russian history. Back around 700s, is it? Yeah, Peter the Great. What you call the Peter the Terrible in Turkish. Or the no, verse. We call him the, yeah, Peter the Man. Very <coughs> Turks called it Peter the Crazy, but uh, at the end uh, they defeated the Ottomans a lot afterwards. So when you start accusing instead of doing things, you are losing. So you know it from all history. Okay, so Kremlin served, therefore, the Russian Charles, isn't it? The Imperial uh, Kings. But then we have the Communist Revolution, when? In 1917. So where do the communist leaders lead? Did they live in barracks because they were representing the poor? Or they lived in the same palace, isn't it? And they preserved it, they didn't destroy it. Be careful. They destroyed everything about the old regime, but they preserved this palace. Why? They killed the imperial family, they destroyed churches, etc., but they didn't touch this palace. They even lived in it and they restored it each time. Lenin lived there, Stalin lived there, these are all very terrible butchers. But why didn't they touch? Yeah, because this is a symbol of royalty, actually, this palace. But because of identity, what constructs, what constitutes your identity is actually your past. Right or wrong? So our current mission is actually to distinguish between the right and wrong and to come up with a new synthesis. So therefore, even in a radical ideology like communism, they care about their tradition. Why? Because without tradition, you cannot live. And this picture is from where? Paris. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean. uh, and when you look at this place, Paris was the seat of, of course, the, the French Empire. But then, in 1789, something happened. What was it? Mediterranean yeah. No. It was French Revolution. So they killed thousands of people. It was a very bloody thing, as is the custom in the Western history. But then, such a radical turnout didn't destroy Paris. So when you look at Paris from the present day picture, you are as if living in 1600s. The town is preserved completely. But when you look at our old Islamic towns, especially unfortunately in our country, you look at Istanbul as a historical city, but the history which was preserved, which has been preserved so far, is perhaps 20% of 
the historical buildings. They were raised during the Republican time. Two times, the thousands of mosques, thousands of houses, whatever you can think of, madrasas, have been destroyed. And deliberately, it was a state policy. Why? Because we were ashamed of our past. But when you look at the modern day French, they care about the history. Although this is the birthplace of modernity, is it? The idea of modernity is a French one. But they preserve their buildings. Why? Because they are reactionaries, they want to live in the past, or because of, again, tradition, identity, which is a very valuable thing. And when you go to France, for example, many people, they refuse to talk to you, talk with you in English, even though they know it. They say, no, français, français. Why? Because this identity is a state policy. From their childhood on, they say you are the number one people in the world, etc. And this is a modern-day European map. So there are regions colored red. What are those countries? They have a commonality. Can you see all these figures? 